Welcome to the Straight Out of Home Video Podcast, part of the Geeky Waffle Network. This week we're talking about Kim Possible So the Drama. I'm Candace, and with me is my co-host Arzu. Hello. And we have two special guests. Tori. Hey Tori. Lovely to be here. Thanks for being on. And Katrina. Oh my gosh, hi. <laughs> and it's super exciting because Katrina new podcast has already well wait let me try this again because it's gonna be by the time this is on your podcast is gonna be already out oh okay. sick <laughs> so yeah so by the time this is out katrina's podcast on the geeky waffle network will be out so, hey. Hey. So exciting. yeah yes. can't wait it's gonna be it's just a, a rumble every show yes and of course it's about star wars Yes, it is. Am I allowed to like talk about it? I don't, Go for it. I, do it. Oh, do it. Oh, hi. Throw okay, the heck out of I'm it. dying to know. Yes. Here at the Geeky Waffle, I am hosting an all new show called The Fight Club Far, Far Away, which is about the best and most iconic Star Wars showdowns and how they came to be. So please do tune in because I do believe my first episode happens to have Candace in it. Candace. Ooh. Ooh. There's synergy Love everywhere. That. Everywhere. The- the link will be in the show notes. And this actually works out really well because Kim Possible is an action show and yeah. there's a lot of fighting about it, right? A lot of fighting, especially for this animation team. I was really surprised with the amount of action. So super exciting. Yeah. Okay. So this is a DCOM, a Disney Channel original movie. Mm-hmm. It was released oh, in yeah. April 8th, 2005. It was intended to be the series finale but Disney Channel renewed it for a four season <gasps> well, because fans all around the world wrote in and been like, we want more Kim Possible. And was I one of those fans as a child? Yes, I was. <laughs> <laughs> I got stamps. I was a teenager. Let me not lie. I wasn't a child. I was a teenager. But I got stamps. I wanted more Kim Possible because like, this started when I was like middle school like and it was on like when i was in high school Mm -hmm. and i just like i love the girl power-esque of it growing up so yeah Yeah. arzu had never actually seen a kim possible i had not this was my first deliberate viewing of kim possible like other than an episode somebody else was watching that i happened to be in the room for do you feel inspired to um watch the rest of it now I might. <laughs> okay. So, Kim Possible is pretty much, the like we said, the series finale, but it's not actually the series finale. Mm-hmm. It's the end of their junior year, and Kim and Ron are, like, there's prom, and mm-hmm. Draken, the evil mastermind, who is, like, Kim's main nemesis, has this ultimate plan, and for the first time ever, his plan seems like it's gonna work. <laughs> and Lo and behold, Kim is like, I need a date for prom because Bonnie, the mean girl who's always mean to everyone, is Mm. like, oh, you're going to end up going with your best friend, Ron, and that's lame. So Kim meets Eric, Mm -hmm. (laughs) played by Phil the Future. They're all played. It's so funny to hear their voices and be like, I forgot, like, Raven was Monique. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wait, what? (laughs) Yeah, Raven yeah. Simone's Monique, and then Kristen Storm is um, Bonnie. Bonnie, yeah. Xenon. And, like, Nicole Sullivan is Shigo. Yes. yes. Oh, from, I love Nicole uh, Sullivan. She was Joan of Arc in Clone High, and it is the most memorable performance uh, of her voice for me. Oh, for me, it's also Buzz Lightyear, Mira Nova, because I love it as a kid. Nova, the best. <laughs> Another kick-ass princess. Yeah, I feel like Mira Nova and Shigo were my childhood crushes so that they okay. we actually checks out yeah <laughs> Trina, our fictional crushes oh, no yeah. our bad boy episode did a, i mentioned shigo yes you did, I did. you did <laughs> I love it. yeah no shigo was like a staple for like any so, young sapphic so oh, okay yeah we're gonna get into the relationships in this show and there's, oh, yeah. there might be tears for me <laughs> <laughs> oh no also, yeah there there will be tears okay so, I unabashedly love this. I own this on DVD. I remember going to the store and buying. I think I do as well, actually. 
Thank you. Tori's a Kim Possible fan too. So is Katrina. Oh, I was. Yes. I had a whole room. I I don't remember like all of it, but I remember at one point when I was a kid, I, my whole room was Kim Possible, and I had a pillow that had like a pocket sewn into it, oh. and you put Rufus in it. Like it was like a little Rufus oh. stuffed animal. Oh yeah, that is Big so KP fan. Cute. <laughs> I, I I didn't know that this was an audio podcast, so I did in fact show up in a. And I'm not even kidding. I have a long sleeve black top and some like green sweats on I'm right take now. Take photos. I'm I wearing was... like a green one like her. I'm wearing like her yes. her like everyday green. Yes, perfect. Oh that my makes gosh. Me so yes. happy. Oh my gosh. Please take I, photos. I'm like, yeah, I, I I totally will. Uh, I, I I love Kim Possible. Like it was it was one. I I was like I'm a little bit older than you guys, but like I was at the tail end of my oh decoms not that cool. But I had already been watching Kim Possible for like several years and uh Same. and i was about to go into my stupid annoying you know older teen phase where i thought i was cooler than anything i was not and this was the one thing that like kept me on disney channel i was like okay i'm, I'm super grown up now blah 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 in like five years this isn't gonna matter and i'm gonna be a child again but for now this is my mentality and kim possible completely ruined like me trying to be cool i was on on it when this movie came out and i like sat down and watched it so yeah, like I was in high school when this came out, but mm-hmm. like a lot of like people like kind of like didn't consider this as like Disney Channel as kiddish because like, yeah. again, because it started like when we were younger and also like this was very teen base. Like mm-hmm. I know like a lot of the the Disney Channel shows are very like 10 year olds are like living in a hotel and <laughs> at that time. Yeah, I wonder <laughs> what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many to choose from. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like this was, and I feel, I feel like in a way, like especially when it comes to like Kim and like the age I was at the time. Like I think we we kind of like aged with her in yes. that sense. Like oh, oh, she yeah. she actually oh, yeah. had like every year was a different year of her schooling, so like <laughs> she did get older. Um, and and I think that that's what just like lined it up perfectly because it was like you know she's my age, sort of. Yeah, she could like. <laughs> kick ass saving the world constantly but still like face the same challenges we had in high school Mm -hmm. and middle school and i feel like it had a lot of like humor to it too like i rewatch okay so let me just give it a little down low we did the stitch in time Mm -hmm. and because that came out on dvd too Mm -hmm. and right after that i just rewatched the whole series and did i laugh and chuckle a few times yes i did it holds up. It's it's Aww. just so good. I'm inspired to rewatch. I've been. I feel like I've been rewatching all of my favorites. Like I finished Hannah Montana. <laughs> <laughs> Judge me if you will. Um, <laughs> but wow, I'm inspired. I'm gonna go back now and watch it all. Yeah, I think I'm gonna bandwagon it and just like watch the whole thing all over again because it was just like it was nice to just kind of like pick up these characters again, you know, and and. Just have a little adventure with them. Yeah, they're so memorable from, Mm -hmm. like, I love the villains. The villains really also make the show. They're so great. They're Mm -hmm. like Batman's rogue gallery, but even, like, sillier. Like, they're kite man level. Like, Frugal Luker, that was my favorite one. (laughs) Who, like, worked at Smarty Mart, which is, like, the equivalent (laughs) Walmart. Mm -hmm. Frugal Luker. Instead of, like, a... A uh, uh, pool of sharks or piranhas. He had like a kitty pool of snapping turtles. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> so good. Oh, that's amazing. I forgot about that. I also want to say that after watching this, um, I had the and I know it's not in this movie, but I had that naked mole wrap in my head for like the rest of the day. Oh yes. God! If you watch I, the episode, it will get in your head. Iconic there. song. Iconic. Mm-hmm. It was that and like the Pokemon rap, and those were like <laughs> the two songs on repeat in my head. Okay, I guess. Okay, so the whole premise is Draken takes over Brando Nacho, which I really want to not go now. Mm-hmm. And he puts in every kid's like kitty meal a little Diablo. This actually was going to be called the day of the Diablos, which I don't think would have worked very well. Disney shut that down very fast. (laughs) So Ron is having like a mental breakdown (laughs) because Kim's dating this guy he doesn't like and his favorite fast food place is like catering to children now. 
the center will not hold. <laughs> Whatever he says. Or maybe that's another episode. <laughs> when, he, when he gets angry at the place, that's just how I felt when Taco Bell got rid of all the potato um, offerings. Yes. Like, I really, I'm sitting there, I was like, this is definitely, I can relate to this. <laughs> I loved his frustration. It's just like, I feel like we've all been there, you know? Oh, like, yeah, for sure. Our favorite thing has been taken away, and now it's like, why did nothing else matters in this moment while I'm upset. Yeah, and then it feels like everything's changing too. Mm -hmm. And then you're just losing losing, losing everything he's ever reality. loved. Yes. Yeah, as he said, everything I've ever loved is gone. <laughs> it's <sighs> just it's just so good. The animation, the voice acting, it's just the writing, it's hilarious. I, I can't. I I loved watching it because, like, as each character gets introduced, like, there was this little feeling of, like, hype deep inside my heart. Mm -hmm. Like, like that first, the opening sequence where, like, they're trying to pull the heist and, like, Shigo pops up on screen. It's like, oh, Shigo! Ah! And I can, like, <laughs> imagine, like, a theater. <laughs> <laughs> if this were, like, a large Marvel movie, that would be, like, the moment where people go, yeah! Oh, Yeah. <laughs> I found out they actually consider making this like a feature length movie film, except Disney released Teacher's Pet, which is based on a TV series, and that did not do well at the box office. So they're like, no, this is going to be a DCOM. Oh, I feel upsetting. I didn't know that. I yeah, know. I feel okay, like this could have been better. I knew what oh, Kim Possible was going into this. I don't know what Teacher's Pet is. So I feel I like. I barely know. I think I know what you're talking about, but. I feel like this would have done better. I will yeah, 100% it, it would have. So 100%. Like merchandising wise, like I feel like oh, like yeah. Tori had a whole bedroom of Kim Possible. There I was did. It's not. It's Kim not Possible one. merch everywhere <laughs> in the early two thousands. So, like I had the video game. I forget what it was about. Oh, uh, it was on my PlayStation Two. I used to play all the Disney Channel like games for hours on the computer. <laughs> too, they had a bunch of mm -hmm. Kim Possible. Okay, so Ron comes to a realization. God, I, I don't want to go to this because I feel like <laughs> you can't see it, but I just sat forward in my chair. I'm ready. Oh, no. <laughs> oh okay. Here goes my childhood, y'all. Here I can goes feel the vibe. my childhood. Okay, so Ron realizes like he's in love with Kim, mm -hmm. which I will say at the time of watching the series, it didn't. I'm um, watching this movie. It didn't feel like it came out of nowhere, but it felt like it wasn't supported enough because mm -hmm. a lot of episodes in season three were not released before this, including like Overdue Rochi, um, Rap and Draken, Team Impossible, Gorilla Fist, Fist especially, because Gorilla Fist is when like Cam goes all jellin mm. about Yori, who has a crush on Ron. So, like, those episodes were needed to get to this movie, but, you know, Disney Channel's like, no, we're saving them. <laughs> I think, uh, I mean, if we're, if you guys are ready to just, like, jump yeah. into that a little bit. Um, Let's do I it. I feel like <laughs> it, look, okay, so, I feel like Ron's objective switching from, like, in this movie alone, like, switching from, like, oh my god, the taco place, to, oh my god, Kim's dating another guy. That was what felt unnatural to me. It wasn't necessarily that Ron liked Kim because it's like, sure, whatever. Like, they've been friends since childhood. They're really good. I like them better as friends, but whatever. Like, feelings happen. Like, that's natural. But it was just that, I think that transition with his, like, primary goals that, like, that threw me off and made it less, I don't know. It feels well, like it didn't, it, I didn't get that, like orchestral moment i was hoping for okay because mm. it, feels, it feels with that in mind it feels more like he's more afraid that everything is changing and less yeah. afraid that kim is with somebody else okay mm -hmm. i would just like to add my dog mr bucky j barks came into the closet to check on me because he knew i was in distress <laughs> so oh, good boy okay yeah. okay if you have the episodes from season three especially mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It makes a lot more sense. Like there's something called like emotional emotion sickness or something like that, which is when Shigo and Kim both get like these little like chips accidentally on them and it controls their emotion. And Kim gets her stuck to being like in love. 
Mm. So it just it amplifies the emotions that are already there, mm-hmm. which they didn't really explore that part. And also, it's really scary that like this scientist created a chip that just like makes your emotions go crazy. <laughs> they don't really go into that either. I'm like that's, that's an epic <laughs> anyway. So it makes her like feel in love, and it makes her act on things. Like if she's angry about something, she's really angry about it. If she's sad about something, like losing her communicator she's Mm -hmm. sad about it so there's a hit already there like kim is in love with ron then yeah so also so like kim kisses ron and they're like oh let's go dating but like while they're dating and she's still like in love with him with the community with the chip he's like i have to break up with you because it's just like he wasn't willing to risk the friendship right but he admits he does like her okay that way but First of all, Childhood Friends to Lovers is extremely boring. <laughs> okay. Because all it tells me is that you talk to people. No, because you talk to one person when you were three and then talk to nobody else. That's okay, what you think were four. They were four. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, my okay, God. Okay, first of all. Second of all, their chemistry in this movie was so awkward. She has way more chemistry with Shigo, honestly. So okay, that's yes. just <laughs> that's yes. thing. But Again, Shigo fight was in so the club. Off. It was so they off that when they kissed on each at the other. end, I expected them to break apart and be like, ew, let's not do that again. Like, as a joke, that's what okay. I thought was going to happen. And then Arzy it ended up just me. note. Honestly, that Arzy- was even a pretty great ending. <laughs> Arzy texted me and was like, I've been bamboozled. Okay, because all you told me is that Kim spends season four with a boyfriend, and I'm like, what an original concept for a Disney show to have a girl with a male best friend, and then she just sustains a boyfriend through the fourth season, and she still has her male best friend. What an original novel concept. But no, she settles wow. for the creepy guy who couldn't deal with the fact that she was talking to another boy. She doesn't like, settle. No. Creepy. She whoa, whoa. Settle. Creepy? Okay. okay, no. Not, 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 not no. creepy. Maybe that was the wrong word. You lost me there. Okay. Possessive. Okay, okay. But possessive. Oh, so the okay, drama that's not, that's, you're not wrong on that. <laughs> not creepy. I'm sorry. That was the wrong word. I'm going to adjust and say possessive, mm-hmm. which is still not okay. No, but it's he's, not. <laughs> but he's not usually that way. He's having a mental breakdown. Oh, what? So he's only like that when he feels that suddenly Kim realized that he's not the only boy in the world? No, because she's dated plenty of guys before that. And he's helped her out with that. Yeah, but this is prom. It's big. It's serious. No, but like, there's like other things too. She's locked him in a closet when she went out on a date with Josh Mankey. And he okay, was the fact that she had to lock him in the closet. No, it was by accident. It was you by have accident. to give that context. Yeah. It was by accident. I was like, this is not proving your point. Then, oh my god! He helped her out when she went on a date. She like, but imagine sustaining that energy into the fourth season. Like, no show does that. That would have been so good. No, because I, that's I agree what, with that statement. That's what Disney Channel shows all do. Like, know, the, that's like the guy I, I and went, girl best friend always fall in love. Like Liz and Gordo yeah, and Lizzie McGuire. But I went in thinking that this was going to be different <laughs> because you led me to believe that I it did be not. Different. I d- how you said a oh, boyfriend. <laughs> Ron Stoppel was a main character. You didn't say his name. I didn't know how many characters you knew. You could have started with that, and then if I didn't know, then explain it. I assumed you knew at least that part. I didn't know if you knew like the characters. So just that she had a boyfriend, and it was nice that in this series four, in season four, they did not break up at all. They had some issues, but they like didn't like do that stupid thing that I hate in all TV shows. Like I'm rewatching Gilmore Girls right now, and I can't wait for. Luke and Lorelai to get together, but I know they're going to break up because that's drama instead of creating drama with them being married or having kids or something like that. Mm. But okay, that's, I'm going on a tangent. <laughs> how I don't like season seven of Girl More Girls. See, my, the, the original read when it came to like Ron and, and the magnitude of his reaction to this was also like, to me, it was my sign that her, something... And not necessarily saying I, I'm seeing this from Ron's point of view, but like something was off about her boyfriend from the beginning. And I don't think Ron even knew like, oh, he's secretly evil. But like the way that people reacted around him and the way he spoke also tipped me off to it. So I guess Ron like magnifying his emotions, maybe like were, it was supposed to be part of that like story point. But at the same time, it kind of just came off of it as him like, I don't know. It just feels very abrupt. And again, yeah. maybe it's just the se- like you, you got to watch the series. You have to watch those episodes. But like, like the shift and the change again in his like objectives and goals in this movie 
was just like it's like you hit a bump in the middle of like a parking lot but you were speeding i also don't like the fact like oh she loses the guy that she was interested in and then she goes for like the next guy Mm -hmm. like she literally goes from going on prom with it to eric to going back to prom after she saves the world with ron she said let me tell you my prom story because (laughs) this right this this particular comment totally reminds me of that like okay so my best friend when we were going to prom he like broke his leg uh during like a skateboarding accident um and because he couldn't dance his girlfriend broke up with him at prom oh Oh, my god we were were children so like so naturally i was like well let's dance like let's have prom together and stuff and we and nothing happened like we just had a nice night i was there with my best friend and that's life he was dealing with heartbreak. So like naturally it would be like in a way it's like, I want to be the person here for you because like, like if you move on to someone immediately, you're probably going to end up sad anyway. So like, let's just have a nice platonic night. And that's kind of how I felt. I I thought things were going to go with Kim and Ron because it's like, wow, this big event just happened. And that guy totally just melted into (laughs) goo that you were trying to date. (laughs) <laughs> but but no, let's totally kiss. Like, I mean, that happened like what fifteen minutes ago. But no, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was kiss. I okay. Counter for this, not to disagree with you, because I think if I was actually in that position, I probably would do much of the same. Like what you're saying, like platonic mm-hmm. night out. But I always yeah. watch these movies and like a- action packed things, and I always think about how like if I had near death experiences, like would I make out with the closest person available? Like maybe. Like in the heat of the moment, no. Probably, yeah, no. but not my childhood best <laughs> like, friend. Like, maybe if I knew I was about to die, but if I had already survived, I, don't I know. guess I don't know. Okay. I don't think I really would, but I just saying, like, I've never experienced these things. I've never saved the world before. Maybe you're on this, like, saving the world high. I don't know. <laughs> I think the, to sort of to Katrina's point, I think part of what weakens this arc for Ron is that it's not that he is sensing there's something wrong with her boyfriend, which Ooh. would have been really cool. Like, there's something wrong and nobody's listening to him because he's, yeah. I'm guessing, always at an 11 like this. But, <laughs> like, like, you know, yes. nobody's taking him seriously. But then, in the periphery, people are, like, telling Kim, it's like, well, you're dating this guy, but what about Ron? And you guys have always been friends. And, like, what about Ron? What about Ron? And it's like, they're really trying to force this, Ugh. which but is the, weakening yeah. Ron's point. No, but the that. thing is, they already had started getting feelings for each other in the previous year. Then you don't need everybody you know to be telling you, like, hey, let's go. Like, unless that is your, unless that's your story. But, like, but that doesn't seem to be Ron's story. Until it very suddenly it's is. It's like, it's like, it's very like, okay, yeah, I'm just a crazy person who just watches the entire series. But yeah, again, <sighs> Kim, with the motion chip, started trying to date Ron and Ron broke up with her. So, of course, what is she thinking? That- but like, <sighs> it's not True. enough of a reason. I mean, I, and- I think the only, the one thing that like, like really blew me out when it came to other people's reactions was like, how her mom looked like you just killed her dog <laughs> when she went on her date. Her mom, like, played by Jean Smart. Yes. And her yes. father, played by Gary Cole. The cast of this movie is incredible. But, like, the way you were supposed to, like, look at her mom and see her destroyed that she was not going to prom with Ron was, like, it was a little, it was a little funny to me. Because, like, my... My mom would not, I mean, like, if this, you're 17, you know, like, a couple years down the road, the, the chances of you still being with this person are not high. So, According yeah. to the craters, they got married and had well, kids. Oh, well, no. in, in, in <laughs> Disney Channel series, you marry the person you were best friends with as a child. That's, that's I guess, how it happens, but I don't know. But I, then, I, five I, years later, there's a divorce, and then Shigo comes along, and it's fine. Yeah. Watch that movie. Watch that movie. Wait, y'all, you guys didn't watch season four. You don't know what happens with Shigo. I don't oh, remember no. season four. I'm sure you I watched him it. Get together? So Do they make her straight? Yes, they make her straight. She's with Draken at the end. That's right. I forgot. Uh, that no, was no, no, the, no, no, no. So five so years dirty. down the line. Five years down the line, she leaves Draken, Kim leaves Ron, and they run away together. Yeah. Or, right. Like, yes, Draken and Ron die in a freak accident, and they find each other. That was orchestrated by <laughs> Shigo and Kim Possible. <laughs> <laughs> And in their mourning, they come together. <laughs> in their great when you say mourning, I envision the um, the Agatha wink. 
<laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, can can like we do it possible? Just like Shigo becomes a third with Kim and Ron. Yeah, come on, give me something. Oh, I, I would love to. I would love you to be a fly on the wall trying to watch so. Shigo and Ron in that scenario. Okay, I I really like them. I, that I liked That's the right. way they were portrayed, especially in season four, because there were a lot of things like it's a cartoon, but still like it made sense at least mm-hmm. like relationship wise. I mean, it's good at least that like you know uh, context aside and everything, we are shown like ha- uh, healthy teenage relationships on yeah. TV and stuff. Yeah, yeah, um, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, just within the context of this movie, it's like I wish there had been more time, you know, for definitely. For it's only after long. minutes. Yeah, it's a really short movie. So I, I feel like if there had been more time and context and stuff, uh, it might have been, it might have not felt like a speed bump. That's all. Yeah. That's pretty much all it was. Like, it doesn't bother me to the point where, like, I hate this and I can't watch it, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. It's just like, oh, that's weird. That was a strange transition. But okay, whatever. <laughs> like, I will I'm admit, still enjoying this movie. <laughs> I cannot see that. I don't think I can, like, constructively see this. Mm. with my nostalgia glasses on <laughs> i don't know if i can because after like watching the whole series i'm just like can possible yes like, the beep was my ringtone ever since i had a cell phone oh yeah <laughs> and then all the people would be like oh you like Kim possible and then i would make new friends because i like Kim possible i i love i love hearing Kim possible and like power rangers like those are the two beeps at the time that like oh, yeah. everyone had on their phones and so it always brought me joy to hear like the Kim Possible beep. But I also loved, you know, it, with, with that in mind, like, I loved watching this movie and, like, seeing this, like, old tech from very recently. <laughs> <laughs> like, Ron picks up the beeper and it says Kim 911 and yeah, like, oh, I remember when you could, like, write things in beepers and, like, how it took 10 minutes to do that and my mom would just, like, type home when she wanted me to come home on my beeper. <laughs> Okay, so there's, like, a big part of this where, okay, so there's a major fight at the end. Mm-hmm. Kim has a cool new suit. And at the end, Kim is like, oh, you know what I hate? And she goes, like, oh, your boyfriend melting? And Kim goes, no, you. And she kicks Shigo into, like, this power coil that collapsed. And all the test audiences thought that Shigo died. That Kim <laughs> straight up murdered her. Oh my that is her God. girlfriend. I would say, yeah, that's that's her future wife. Whatever. Uh, sometimes you kill or attempt to kill your future spouse. That's I was gonna say that's, true. that's part of that's the romance. Oh baby. no! Yeah, ours you and her enemies to lovers. Yeah. I won't. I won't okay. bring it up. It's Here okay. we are. Do you know, do you know how childhood right. friends. Do you know how childhood friends can two lovers can be improved. You put in enemies in the middle of that. Childhood enemies to lovers? Ch- childhood friends to maybe even childhood friends to childhood enemies, but childhood <laughs> friends to enemies to allies to lovers. Then that like would be my- Bonnie and Kim. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so maybe, maybe Bonnie and Kim. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe Kim secretly knew a little girl who was slightly older than her named Chico as a child. <laughs> I was going to say, we can write this backstory. It's not hard. <laughs> Let's make it work. Okay, so they added the scene where you see Draken and Shigo in the, like, van at the end Mm -hmm. to make sure people knew that Kim Possible did not murder someone. She straight up (laughs) murdered a woman on screen. (laughs) Oh, wow. Oh, God. I will say, as somebody who had not seen Kim Possible prior to this, it is a testament to the writers that I did not feel lost and they actually explained who everyone was and what the deal was. Easily enough mm-hmm. to understand because not every, like you said, Candace was supposed to be a season series finale. Not every series finale would do that, but they did, and I appreciate it. Yeah, and again, it's yeah. for kids too. Like it's for, for like five and up too, plus teenagers. So like mm-hmm. kids shows, I'm, especially, always like repeat the names, repeat who everyone is. But you I'm know? thinking of like like when the first Pokemon movie came out, and like if you weren't watching Pokemon, like good luck, like <laughs> following that. But this was this was the case here. So I remember my mom. Stand. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I remember my mom trying to pay me off to go take my little sister to one of the Pokemon movies, and there was not a price she could reach that I would take. And I was a teenager desperate for money. 
<laughs> Sorry, that's a little tangent, but yeah. I like I I just liked all the little reminders I was given. Like I forgot that Kim's parents were like both uh like doctors, inventors, that kind yeah. of thing. Her dad's, an inventor. Her and dad's her a rocket mom science went. and her mom's a brain surgeon. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it was like cool to see them again. I really enjoyed how like you know, even though her mom was like strangely heartbroken to a degree that I don't understand, <laughs> I did enjoy their involvement in the movie, like her dad getting kidnapped and being damsel and stuff. That was pretty cool. Yeah. And I, I do like like Kim, like she does have like a moment where she feels defeated, but mm-hmm. she doesn't really like have like the damsel in distress kind of moment ever. Yeah, she's always the one saving other people, which I think, I think that's like why I liked Kim Possible so much because like she was never in trouble and when she was in trouble it was like a team effort so like to like help her get out and she was saving herself and stuff like that that's what i remember about her Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the first scene of the movie when kim pops out of the inflatable smiley the mulan theme is briefly heard (laughs) that is so cool that's cool i didn't realize that okay are you guys ready okay rotten tomatoes (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> there Here is no go. there is no critic score but there is an audience score okay prizes rice rules everyone guess okay um, 75 percent. i'm gonna say uh 79 percent uh, i will be a little more enthusiastic and say 80 percent okay you're all are over it's 74 <laughs> Wow. See, I enjoyed this film. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, and some of the reviews. <laughs> Someone said it is the Citizen Kane of DCOM. Okay, because he well, I don't know about that. <laughs> Did you write that, Candace? I might Candace have back in the day. <laughs> okay, but like Citizen Kane isn't very good. That's not a compliment. <laughs> oh, Nick C says. Don't know where the F Disney is going this, but guys like Ron don't ever get the girl. Oh, oh, please. Oh, no. Mm. Whatever. It's ridiculous. I have this I want to reassess my whole position. Right? Like, (laughs) Like just out of spite. Jenna, though, says, great movie. I love the moral at the end. Give geeks a chance. The ending really touched my heart. Oh, is Jenna the same as that guy who wrote the review before? <laughs> I don't know. <sighs> like, I don't, I don't know. I don't understand why it. Okay, like, I don't necessarily. I support your support of Ron and and Kim as a ship. Thank you. I appreciate yes. it. Yes, because she and... was technically like ten years older than Kim, and Kim is a minor. <laughs> But on that on that note, like I feel like people are being in that sense too rude to Ron to assume that he did not already have the capability of dating Kim because he already dated her and said no because you know the weird stuff going on. But like I'm pretty sure he had other girlfriends. I yeah, just, like um, he's not like an incel. He's just weird, you know. <laughs> yeah, like a lot of girls crushed on him. He did date another girl for a while and he got some hotties yeah like this give geeks a chance thing rod has already had a bunch of chances okay <laughs> like yeah so uh it's, I just, yeah, it's, oh sorry I just it's cause, question it's cause she, his goes really, she goes really 10 years older i think she's something this whole like time that. i thought they were close to the same age now i just feel yeah i thought she was like 18 or 19 years yeah, old yeah i thought they were like no because like makes that dragon twist really weird <gasps> yeah gotta be because Draken is the same age as Kim's, Kim's dad because yeah, they went to college really together. together. That's right. Yeah. So I would I forget I fa- I think she's twenty eight at the beginning. I think that's what the crater said what? at the beginning when Kim is like fourteen. Yeah. New ship, me time, she go. Yeah. I there mean, we go. Okay, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so she has a college degree. We find out in the fourth season in childhood development. Oh wow. <laughs> So she has to at least like oh, have right. been able to graduate the college and then become a villain and be like a regular villain because she has. I mean, all I don't know. Co- college might have made her a villain. <laughs> That's true too. She she saw her tuition bills. <laughs> yeah, for that real. was it. That's the end. That's what I would do. Yeah. So they say like mid twenties, like around there, and by by this point, she's like 
late twenties or well, there's always Bonnie. Very true. <laughs> Poor Candace for stressing her out. Okay, because she goes not an option. <laughs> Later on it's she's fine. an option when Kim is like an adult. After, yeah, let Kim go to college, gain some perspective, and then Shigo will be there waiting. Uh, Nick <laughs> says, if you watched any of the series, then you would have guessed how it ended roughly 12 seconds in. Nick, it's a Disney Channel original movie. Of mm-hmm. course we know what's going to happen. Oh, what? absolutely. What did you expect? There is a boy and a girl in the same vicinity and they get along. Guess what's going to happen? Yeah, Draken's going to try to take over the world. Kim's going to stop him. Shocked. Yep. Mm-hmm. shocked okay someone else said Kim Possible can proudly join Batman the Animated Series an example of excellence in its class sort of Buffy the Vampire Slayer for kids the TV show is intelligent amusing despite being aimed at children never childish mm-hmm. the film is no exception and no I did not write that oh, so that's, a, that's a Candace review right there <laughs> yeah <laughs> Because I, I did rewatch Batman Animated Series a few years ago, and it holds up, too. Just, like, I feel like this holds up as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's quality. It really, like, Your this quality is, stays quality. Kim Possible and its movie are still things that I would, like, happily show my niece, my nieces. Yeah. <laughs> I did not expect, like, well, I should have expected Arzu to be, be like, oh, friends to lovers, grow. I just don't. I just, like... It's not even like friends to lovers. It's childhood friends to lovers that I don't like. Oh, right. I mean, friends like to every Demi fine. out there is like, damn, Arzu. <laughs> no, because you can make friends after the age of five. It can be done. <laughs> can you? I, it, like, I need some like drama in my friends. Like they've been separated for 30 years and have never seen or interacted with each other. And now they have to awkwardly try to get along to save the world. And oops, they're falling in love. I would love that because that That's to me is not time. like we've been in our space, con- each other's space constantly for the last 16 years. Like, I don't know. It just doesn't appeal to me. I think that not very interesting, but I'm not the only one calling the shots. But the Can't thing wait is, for like, the evil Ron, Ron rewrite. <laughs> Ron and Kim have other best friends. And no, I'm not counting Rufus as Ron's best friend. <laughs> but you should. Yes. Oh, we didn't even, we barely talked about Rufus. Rufus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do not look up a picture of a naked mole rat in real life because it will destroy the illusion of Rufus. <laughs> <laughs> it is terrifying. I kind of want to look it up say, now. I think they're all cute. Okay. Yeah, little monsters. Little monsters. Little hairless monsters. Yep, oh, well. that's exactly what they are. 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Rufus always made me happy as a kid. Yeah, it was good to see. If, there's a, if any critique is to be had about this movie, it's that it needed a lot more Rufus. Oh, yeah. yes. It should have just been agree. So the Rufus. Right? Or, so or, or like Rufus. a little Rufus mini movie ahead of it, like like Pixar does, you know? Oh, that would there be is really a really cute, cute episode cute. where, like, Kim has to babysit Rufus. Oh. And he swells a chip that, like, the scientist made. Another chip. It's always, like, a computer chip. <laughs> don't know what's up with the show um and all the villains were trying to kidnap him while like ron's in paris with his bear oh my god <laughs> it's so cute oh yeah i need to rewatch the series for sure it's so good and when you get to the third season you'll be like oh they were building this up mm-hmm. 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 any other thoughts feelings I love that everybody knows she's a spy. I realize, or a secret agent, what, superhero. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I just like that this isn't a secret, like from anybody. Yeah. And I don't know if that was like a whole series thing or if that happened somewhere along the way, but literally, she, she go and drag and know where she lives. Like, they know where her house <laughs> it's is. It's so funny. They know where she goes to high school. <laughs> it's great. And yet, somehow, they struggle. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, I feel like they're like evil, but they're not like evil. They have a code. They're really bad at it. Yeah, okay. they're also yeah. bad at what it is. Yeah, that's what, like, that's what I love. Like Shigo is super smart. She's just lazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she like in the stitch in time. Like it's about her actually taking charge, and of course she takes over the world. No problem. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> it's also funny to me how Kim is not the most popular person in school. So doing what she does when she's like on the news. I, I don't know if that. that's something that I, like, missed because I haven't watched the show in a really long time, but I just thought that was funny. I think, okay, so I've, like, I've read all the TV tropes and people were talking about this, too. It's, like, 
she might just be really weird. Like, how do you approach a girl who is like off, like battling ninjas? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And her best friend is a dude who has a naked mole rat. Yeah, and she's always she's not in school. I'm guessing. I know she does like she's a cheerleader and she does all this stuff. But how much time for socializing does she really have with all the traveling she does? That's a good point. I just feel like people would want to be like, "Hey, yeah, you're cool." You're friends with the girl who you know saves the world every day or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It always like it. It always seemed. uh, I feel like Bonnie and her friends were the only people who actually cared to make fun of Kim, whereas like everyone else is kind of like, "Well, she's here." Like, (laughs) oh yeah, yeah. but like. Like those were the people who were making fun of Kim, which were like her litter her teammates. Like Kim isn't isn't your standard like MC who is like bullied and like a nerd and and oh, you know oh, definitely not. Yeah, like she's 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 she, so it's just those girls like causing all that pressure for her because I don't think it's necessarily that she's like popular, but she's not disliked or anything. You know? Oh no, definitely not yeah. disliked. But it's just funny to me that she's not like. I guess the Bonnie, because I kind of feel like on the hierarchy, Bonnie's probably what a little more popular, right? Quote unquote. Maybe, right? Maybe I don't even know. Mm. I need to rewatch. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just she's popular enough. Like Ron says, she's popular compared to him. It's just Bonnie being super difficult. Yeah, yeah. I feel like she's well liked. She seems like a nice person, and like you know, Bonnie's just a jerk. Yeah, who has a secret crush on her. <laughs> That's what it is. She's acting out. Exactly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Tori, where can people find you online? Well, you can find me. Uh, my Twitter and my Instagram are at the Mandatorian. Uh, you can check out my shop, which is Creature Cartel, and that's at uh, Creature Cartel and Creature Cartel Shop on Twitter and Instagram, respectively. Um, and then you can also check me out on Octo Radio for the Mandatorian Creed. Awesome. And Katrina? Other than your awesome new podcast on the Geeky oh, Waffle, yeah. where can people find you? You can find me anywhere on the internet. If you look for Oh Katrina, that's O-H-C-A-T-R-I-N-A. Do tune in to a fight club far, far away on the Geeky Waffle Network. Um, and check out my other podcasts, Itu uh, Banta Tambien, where we talk about pop culture from a Latinx point of view, and Padro Pascal, where we go through the long and wonderful filmography of actor Pedro Pascal. Yes, I can't w- wait to watch The Great Wall. Yes, I love bad movies, so I'm like I'm in. Uh, okay. You can find us at the geeky underscore waffle on Twitter, the geeky waffle everywhere else on social media, including Patreon, thegeekywaffle.com to see all our awesome new shows. My personal Twitter is Candace is a geek because it's true. Arzy, what's yours? Mine is Arzy. I mean, because I was 18 and unoriginal. <laughs> well, we hope you all have a happily ever after. Until. I guess you fall in love with your best friend and that's super boring to everybody. Never going to be happy. It can be happy to you. 